Welcome to Wellspring on the Air. I'm Nicole Alfonso, a therapist at Wellspring and the host of today's show about grief and loss during the holidays. Today, our show is called Coping with Grief and Loss During the Holiday Season. With me today to discuss this very important topic is Goma Conde and Delia Caderno. Together, we want to tell you about how to work through feelings of grief and loss during the holidays in a healthy way. So stay with us. We've got some very good information for you. Welcome, Goma and Delia, to the show today. Thank you for being here with us. This is a hard topic, but a very important one, especially in the circumstances that we find ourselves in with the pandemic. So I would like each of you to take a moment and just introduce yourselves to our listeners. Right. right. My name is Goma Kondi. I am a licensed marriage and family therapist with Wellspring. I work with couples and I work with adult women and men. Um, as well as adolescent girls. I also run the grief and loss group currently. It's been running for over a year. So feel free to call in if you need that support. It's an order to be here. You are perfect for this show um, because you do run that that group. And of course, you've had your own personal experiences. Thank you, Goma. Mm -hmm. Delia, would you share about you, please? Yes, my name is Delia Caderno and I'm an administrative assistant here at Wellspring. And um, my husband went home to be with the Lord three years ago on November 25th, uh, 2018. Um, and I've taken uh, just these few years just to uh, be able to deal with that grief. Um, and so um, I'm, I'm excited for the show. I think, uh, I think it's going to be just really great for, for me and for those who are listening as well. Yes. Thank, thank you, Delia, for being a part of it. We appreciate it. So um, this topic is very relevant uh, to us, especially during this time that we're living in um, with the pandemic. Um, sometimes the anticipation of the holiday season is very exciting, right, and joy-filled. But for many people, the holidays can really bring a lot of emotions of grief, um, loss, isolation, loneliness. Um, so Goma and Delia, would you share a little bit about your experience with grief and loss, uh, especially during the holidays? And, you know, I know both of you have lost uh, important people in your lives. Um, so would you be able to share just a little bit um, about what that's been like? Sure. So my, my husband passed uh, November 25th, 2018. So it's just around um, right after Thanksgiving, mm. uh, a week after my birthday. Uh, and, you know, a month before Christmas. So even in that process, that was, that was so very, very difficult. Um, but, you know, the, the good thing, or if there's good things that come off of that, is that um, I had time to prepare. So my husband was sick for, you know, it was 18 months from the time that he was diagnosed until the time that he went home with the Lord. So I had time to sort of prepare um, and I have these uh, letters, I have like two sets of binders of letters that I started to write to him way back in September mm. before he went home, because I knew that there was going to be a time that I had things to share with him, thoughts that I wasn't going to be able to, A, because of just the grief that I was going through and I, you know, and what he was going through, and I just wanted to be able to do that. So I had, I had time to, to write letters to him and, and questions to God about what was happening. Um, so, you know, when it did, and it's interesting because when he finally went home um, to be with the Lord, I had written so many letters about grief and pain and suffering. So it was a continuation of that and continues to be so today. Mm -hmm. But I think around the holidays, what was really, really helpful to me was um, a couple of things. I had some amazing women who, friends who, who said to me, do what you need to do for you. Mm -hmm. You know, like Juan would want you to be healthy. Juan would want you to take care of yourself. If he was here, how would he take care of you? What would he yeah. do now to take care of you? And so I did those things. I took time, you know, I, I was patient with myself and I, and I, and I told people, this is, you know, this is what I need as much as I could have told him. Um, and then I just, when I wasn't able to, I just said, I, I can't, I, mm -hmm. I can't even talk about this right now. Um, so just to be um, taking care of myself and then um, you know, just allowing, really just asking for what you needed. But, you know, obviously um, there's culture and there's everything else. And so, you know, you're, there's expectations to, mm, okay, it's been yes. a while, move on and get over it. But I think, you know, with, with, with God's help and through prayer and, 
you know, I really had to be strong and to say, you know, I'm not going to succumb to my culture. I'm not, I'm going to, to really feel what I need to feel. And mm -hmm. I would start most conversations by saying, I'm going to cry, but I'm okay. Mm -hmm. That's so, good. Yeah. That's good. And I think that that's so important. Um, thank you, Delia, for sharing that. Um, yeah, the culture tells you to, that you need to grieve a certain way, but in, in, in truth, you really grieve the way you need to grieve, right? And for yeah. a certain time. And for a certain yes. time. Like, you know, it's been three years and I grieve. I, I will never get over grieving the loss mm -hmm. of my beloved one. Mm -hmm. I just learned how to live with it. I live with him in a different way, yeah. um, you know, in our relationship. But yeah, I mean, but there's expected. Even three years now, I think is the hardest because people are like, <laughs> you're not done yet? Yeah, you should be fine now. Right, right, right. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. How about you, Goma? Well, I think for me, so my mother slipped into, my mother and I talked every day. Even after I got married, we talked literally every day. And then we had spoken on Christmas very briefly. This was um, seven years ago. And she actually was asking me a question. And I said to her, I'm going to call you back because the kids are unwrapping their presents. So they're unwrapping. And I, I was expecting at the time. So after I was really burnt and fell asleep. That was Christmas mm. night, Christmas morning. I, I mean, the 26th, the day after Christmas, I woke mm -hmm. up and my brother called me. When he called me, I thought, oh my gosh, because he used my mother's phone. So I thought, mm -hmm. I didn't call her back. I said I was called back. I didn't call her back. Well, he had called to tell me that she had slipped into a coma. He didn't know what happened. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. So she went from being well, just had a physical two months prior, all came back clear. And then she was in a coma the day after Christmas. Mm -hmm. And I was wow. expecting and we prayed and we petitioned with God and we begged. Mm -hmm. And within seven days, we lost our mother. Wow. So I never had the luxury of saying goodbye to her. Mm -hmm. So around the holidays, it's really, really difficult mm -hmm. because all of those feelings mm -hmm. and questions and, you know, why didn't I call right back that night? Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, oh my gosh, I wish she had told me something was yeah. wrong. She didn't know anything was wrong. So all of those emotions come flooding and it's very heavy during this time. Yes, of yes. So, yeah. so for me, it's, it's a very real raw moment and I'm glad we're doing this show today because I truly have those feelings during the Yes, holiday. they are going to come up for you in the next few weeks, of course. Yeah, they're very, um, very yeah, and that was sudden for you. Um, for Delia, she had some preparing time, and the, you know everybody has different experiences. But yeah, and both of you had your the people you love pass during the holidays, which is just an added piece, right? Because some people lose somebody, it, let's say, in another month, right? It's not the holiday months, but then the holidays bring up the memories of the joy that they, you know, and and the lack of the presence of that person, right, brings up a lot of feelings. But you actually both experienced it during the holidays, which is, mm -hmm. I feel like, an added hurt and pain, you know? Absolutely. So, yeah. So let's talk a little bit about what's happening in our world right now. Um, I was doing some research about, obviously, the deaths uh, based on the pandemic. We have about 800,000 people that have passed because of COVID-19. And when I, you know, I feel like if, if, if I think of each of those people, I assume that they have about eight or 10 relatives, right, that are affected by that death, children, siblings, you know, siblings, uh, aunts, uncles, any person, right? Um, and then I think, so that makes it about possibly 8 million people affected by grief and loss. Then I think about other causes of death, which are, you know, uh, death by suicide, overdose, cancer, car accidents. So I feel like there is really well over 10 million people that have experienced loss in the last two years mm -hmm. and are grieving, right? And are grieving greatly. And so um, we may have friends, family that we will be together with that have had something really painful, a painful loss. So Goma, um, you know, you're the specialist in this, not only personally, but also because you're a therapist. Could you talk about um, some of these normal yeah, grief symptoms that people can be experiencing and to just normalize that this is normal when you grieve, you know? 
Yeah, yeah. And, people, and talking about the holidays and how many people have lost, I mean, the reality is even now people are losing people, even mm -hmm. as we speak. So it's very real. And some of the signs, I want to start with the physical signs because when we think about grief most times, we don't really associate the symptoms with things that are physical. So let's mm. talk about physical ones, the pain, the physical pain, the aches on mm. the body, the restlessness, the agitation, and then the real fatigue. This is one that I experience. I don't do the pain, but that fatigue that feels like someone has been beating on me. Mm. Uh, that's, that's one that I experienced during, during the holidays a lot. Um, and a lot of this is due really to depression and anxiety, right? So for me, it would be more the anxiety that I feel that makes me feel just really tired. Um, and for other people, it's because they're dealing with this depressive uh, symptom. So they feel really drained. So just really understanding what it is that you are experiencing. So I know when I start to feel my heart racing, I know that I'm getting anxious. Mm. And when I start to feel my shoulders heavy and feeling like I'm carrying bricks on my shoulders, I know that it's because I'm anxious. So really being able to identify what it is we're feeling and then being able to do things, I'm sure you will talk about later on, that we can help us with these things. But yes, agitation, restlessness, the physical, physical pain, and the real fatigue, those are all things that people experience um, as they grieve, mm. and especially around the holiday season. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. Um, about, um, yeah, the yeah, because the the emotional ones are the ones we focus on the most, right? But um, it might start off physical, and you're like, "What's going on with me?" Right? Correct. Yeah, and, and and those emotional ones really even sometimes end up bringing the on the physical ailments, all of the pain, because the sadness. If we don't deal with the sadness, right, then we end up just living with this emotional roller coaster mm. up and down and we know that our stress hormone which is our cortisol level increases and if the stress hormone level is high then we're going to have all of the pain and all of the extra weight that we carry during the season i see Dalia it, wants to say something. <laughs> so one of the things that happens to my body is um and, and I, I didn't really realize that it was is mm. like i would get this deep like a, a strange hiccup a strange like heaving um mm. I, I was you know during the time that my husband you know during the last couple of years i've been in and out of miami so i would go um for different reasons and come back and every time i would come back i would have these weird like heavings hiccups and just like you know and and i'm like what is going on with me i you know i thought it was something i ate Mm -hmm. I thought it was like, I need to you know, <laughs> stop eating cheese or whatever, you know, and then, you know, my mom and I realized that every time I had some kind of, so every time I would come back, I would get it, where there was some kind of anxiety dealing with stuff, um, you know, that mm -hmm. my husband normally would deal with, I would get these things. And so now it's really, to me, it's like a bell. Like when I, when I get that, I'm like, what's happening? You know, where, you know, something is not, so this yeah. isn't just, it's physical. But it's it doesn't necessarily have to have a physical base for it. It's you know it's a stress or anxiety or, or emotional that's mm -hmm. beneficial. Thank you for that. <laughs> yeah, you're, yeah. Welcome. you're welcome. Yes. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. When we come back, we'll hear more about loss and grief from Delia and Goma. Okay, welcome back to Wellspring on the Air. This is Nicole Alfonso. If you're just joining our show, our topic today is coping with grief and loss during the holiday season. So far today, we've talked about the normal symptoms and responses of grief and loss. Um, if you've joined us late, you can find us on your favorite podcast channel on Wellspring on the Air or on our website blog page at wellspringmiami.org. Just search for this particular topic. So I want to go ahead and, and ask this just practical question about what steps have you taken during the holidays to help face your grief, to help actually allow, you know, grief to happen. Delia, you could go ahead and share it with us. You know, for me, it, the process of grieving, I don't separate like holiday grieving for, my, for me as everyday grieving, because I think there's just so much to, to put off, you know, till that month or whatever. I, I tell people I grieve almost every day. 
Mm. Um, but I do it in ways. So I write letters to my husband, uh, you know, and it gets less and less. I used to go to bed crying, wake up crying. Mm. Um, when I know that there are things when I'm going to be around family, um, you know, I, I try to really just let them know how I'm feeling. I, you know, I'll tell them I'm real sensitive. Um, so I, beforehand, so that they know what's happening. Um, and I think that we've come with, you know, with family and friends. And of course, COVID, I don't want to say it has helped, but it has helped a little bit because we're not so close with families. We've been apart. So, you know, it's good, getting back together with, with family makes it a little bit easier to be able to say, you know, um, I'm not going to go here or celebrate mm -hmm. this or mm -hmm. um, things are going to be different for me. Um, and every Christmas since Juan's passing has been very, very different, you know, and I try just to do what I'm, you know, what I can do at the moment and tell people this is all that I can do and hope it's is is good, you know, it's good enough for them. It'll have to be. <laughs> yeah. Because I, just, I can't I can't help them. That's know? that's true. And I think that um what you're trying to say is like we shouldn't have expectations, right? Yes. It's just gonna happen what happens. If you don't feel like being, you know, with the family, you don't do that, right? If you feel like being with family, you can do that, right? No exactly. should or shouldn'ts. You just based on how you're doing and what you need to yes. make it through, right? And to help you. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Delia. Just of putting us in your shoes here with your loss. So Goma. Let's get into this part where, you know, what do we do with it? How do we do this? Like, what do, you know, some people are new to grief and, and they don't even know, like, what do, what do you recommend um, for those who are experiencing loss? Um, what do they do during the holidays? What should they do yeah. to help them, you know? One of my favorite uh, quotes, and it comes from this movie called Tuesdays with Maury. And you can watch the movie. It's a beautiful movie on loss and how to experience love. But he says in it, death ends a life, mm. not the relationship. Mm -hmm. mm. And the mm -hmm. first time I heard that line, it was shortly after my mother had passed and I was still in school. And we went to watch this movie and I heard this line and it brought me such calm. Mm. I thought, hmm, I can actually keep my relationship with my mother. Yes. The life is over, but that connection remains. Yes. Mm. And I don't have to ever lose that. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I want to say, if you're, if you're grieving this very moment, is to remember that the life is over, but your bond with this person doesn't have to end. Mm, that's it good. Continues. So mm -hmm. hold on to that. And then the second thing is, do not be afraid of feeling all the feels. Mm -hmm. Don't give up very important emotions. Mm. And one of those important emotions, one is sadness. Don't give it up. Don't be afraid to cry if you need to cry. Mm. I'm going to tell you a quick story on tears. So a lady lost her husband and she wore contact lenses. So she realized that she was changing lenses faster than usual. So she went to her optometrist and she said, my lenses are wearing out much faster. What's wrong? He laughed. And then she said, why are you laughing? And he said, well, we have three types of tears as people. One is called basal tears. And that one is for lubrication. It keeps the eyes clear. Then we have reflex tears, which helps with irritation. When something goes into the eye, mm. that's the tear that helps to wash it away. Then we have what we call psychic or emotional tears. Mm. And that those particular tears produce this hormone called leucine and canthalin. And that hormone actually is our feel good hormone, right? It's connected to that painkiller that we have in our body. So when we're crying emotional tears, we're really stimulating our painkillers in our body. Mm. That makes a lot of sense because I definitely sense. feel better after crying, after right? Cry. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So what he said to her was, the reason your contact lenses are wearing out faster is because of the acid. The, the psychic tears is, mm. is actually causing the etching in your lenses. So I tell all my grieving clients, if you need to cry, cry. It is going to help you heal. Yes, yes. So contrary to what society tells us, it doesn't make you suffer. It helps you heal. Mm -hmm. so. I like what Dahlia says about that. Hey, I'm going to cry, but it's okay. Like I'm giving you permission 
like I'm telling you it's okay and then I'm crying <laughs> you know that's like right. I'm okay with this tears right that's right yeah yeah, yeah. Because yeah. people are not generally okay with tears, right? It's it's uncomfortable be, to be around people that cry. And I am and I guess the challenge that I would say right now to anybody listening is be present with those tears. Like those tears are honoring someone important, right? right. Um, they're good. Like God made it on purpose that we'd have tears. And now even like now when you talk about all those hormones and stuff that's happening in there, like there is a reason, right? That that tears are are good and that we should embrace them and not like, you know, lock them away. Yeah, so yeah. Do that and then talk to trusted people, okay? Do something for others. Mm, yes. Us. And then of course, focus on the fond memories that you have of your loved ones. Okay. So when you do those things together, you're able to usually move through the grieving process on your own, at your own pace, but in a healthy way. It's important yeah. to do it at your own pace. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Those are really good. Um, just basic points to, to remember. Um, so let me ask you this because this is a loss is a hard topic for all of us, right? It's difficult to, to stand in pain with someone. So, and I know that we hear stories about people saying things that are just not good during, you know, like you should get over it, uh, you know, even like, something like they're in heaven now, which, which is great. Like, really, we know, like some of our people are in heaven, right? But, but right now in my grief, that doesn't help, right? And so um, what are some things that we could say to someone that is experiencing a loss? Delia, you had people probably come to you and tell you some things that were encouraging. Some were maybe not so encouraging. What, what did you like to hear when, when you were experiencing loss? You know, the, the most comforting thing for me was when people acknowledged that, you know, that I was going through the loss and the grieving process and said, I, I wish there was something that I could do. Mm -hmm. I'm here. You mm -hmm. know, and I think that there's nothing that you can do. And you're right. You know, so many people kept saying, oh, you know, he's in a better place. And my answer is like, yep, but I'm not. And <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. I like that you he said is, that. But yeah. I'm not in a better place, you know, mm -hmm. because there's, you know, loss has so many layers to it, right? So I lost my husband, but I also lost my best friend, mm. my companion, my, you know, my go-to person, my yes. handyman, <laughs> my dry, you know, like all of these things. And so yeah. I also needed to figure out what was I grieving? Was I just grieving the love of my heart or was I grieving the man that would fix things, you know, because I can find somebody to fix that. So, you know, like I had yeah. to sort of figure that out. But yeah, so I think what was really helpful was to acknowledge that there was nothing that they can do to help me through this process, except to be there for me and love me through it. Um, that's the most helpful thing, to be present and just love the person and just wait. Um, yeah. Yeah. And don't give me homework. <laughs> You know, like, you know, call me if you need anything. You know, like, I mean, that's homework for me. You know, like, just you call me, you know, and I've had so many people that said, um, you know, I'm going to call you, uh, you know, in a few days. And they did. Let's go get coffee instead of like, do you want to go get coffee? Because most of the time I didn't want to do anything, but it was like, come on, let's go. Let's go yeah. here. Let's do there. So just be proactive. And, and don't give us homework because, you know. Yeah. So don't wait for them to reach out. Right. right, the person that has experienced a loss, but you reach out, right? You yes. text, hey, I'm thinking about you. Would yeah. you like to go out and do something? You know, um, yeah, engaging Absolutely. them in that way. That's good. I appreciate that. That's really good. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, I think that the, you know, just being there with the person, hugging them. I'm really, I'm, so, I'm just so sorry, right? Like there's nothing more to say. And, and I think that's hard because we always want to, want our words to soothe the situation. And, and this is a moment where, where our words can't do that, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. So in wrapping up, um, could, you, could you share some special scriptures that have helped you during that time, have comforted you for others that are listening that may need to um, read that scripture over and over again to just feel some sort of comfort and peace? Sure. Let me just say this very briefly as we go on, because yes, because there's a cultural component to grief. Yes, there's also a personality piece to grief. Uh -huh. So I always say 
it's important to ask a person in any kind of love mm, yes. action that you take. Always ask, how can, how can I love you right now? Mm -hmm. Rather than saying, what can I do to your grief? Just say, how can I love you right now? And that person will teach you how to love him or her. Mm. Okay, so that's really important to do that because some of us are quiet grievers, like myself. I grieve in silence. Mm. So maybe you're knocking at my door may not be the way to love me. So we have to know how to love people when, when they're grieving. And be okay with them saying, I just I just need my space Correct. or, right? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yes, yes. And my, my scripture verse is really um, Lamentations 3, 22 to 23. It says, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Mm. Great is your faithfulness. Amen. And mine has been so many, but uh, Psalm 46 has been really close to my heart because so many of the times have felt like that. You know, it says, this, God is our refuge and strength and ever present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear that the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar uh, and foam. Because I, you know, that to me was at the end is that God is going to comfort me, even though it feels like the earth is giving way in my heart, mm. it feels these things, um, you know, he is my comfort and my refuge. Um, so that's always been such a good scripture that, you know, in this world, we will experience pain. That's what it is, you know, yeah. it's a broken world. Um, we have to embrace it, but that God is never far off and that he is good. Yes. He loves us. Amen. Um, when I was looking, uh, when I was thinking about this particular topic and just how um, difficult, I mean, there's nothing easy about just experiencing someone passing and, and never being able to, you know, in this life, see them again. Um, I think, what is it, you know, what do we what is it for, right? Like, what do we get from this? Like, cause God is always doing something even in the hard things, right? And so I think of this particular scripture that says, praise be to the God and father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the father of compassion and the God of all comfort who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. And so I think about, how we, the fact that we experience loss helps us to help others through that process, right? Mm -hmm. Be there, be compassionate for what they're, you know, experiencing. And so we now be, are able to, in community, help someone, right? Because we always say that in community, we heal. And that's, that also speaks to that, right? That, that verse of like, this happened to you, but you can share that with someone else. And that, brings you out right of that darkness that or that that sadness that you're feeling when you you know you're experiencing a painful thing together with someone else absolutely right and you know jesus experienced all of that you know so we we you know we are looking to for hope to a god that truly truly was fully human to the extent of what that word means you know all of the emotions he felt them he was not uh, you know, exempt, exempt mm -hmm. from feeling those emotions. He felt them deeply, deeply. Um, yes. and, and so the, he, he's then able to help us through it because he himself knows what we're feeling. And so then we can help others. Absolutely. It's this beautiful sort of web of life yeah. uh, in the yeah. middle of, of, of death and sin. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you both um, for being here today, being vulnerable with your own loss. I think it's important for people to understand that even um, therapists right people experience loss and they they need to find their way on how to work through it and you know it's okay um and so thank you for for just sharing um, your stories with with our listeners today so um it's time to close out the show thank you again goma and dahlia for joining us we hope that you enjoyed the show, that you um, received some, some good nuggets of information for you to help others or um, just to, for yourself through this uh, season. And so uh, thank you again for joining us. Um, if you joined us uh, late, maybe midstream, you can find this show and others on the podcast. We have a Wellspring on the air or on our blog on wellspringmiami.org. Um, the title of today's show is Experiencing Grief and Loss during the holiday season. Uh, thank you again. Encourage us and let us know you're listening by sending comments or questions to on the air at wellspringmiami.org. 
It's time to wrap up. This is Nicole Alfonso with Wellspring on the Air because hearts and minds matter. <laughs>